I've been studying both sculpture and computer science for over a decade now, but I didn't start making real strides in either until I started mixing them together. Thanks to a series of professors encouraging me to use my skills in computer science or art in the other discipline, I got into making new media art and interactive installations. My first interactive piece, Allies, taught me more about creating a minimum viable product and software than any computer science class I had taken. For the first time, I felt like I was onto something, something new and worth examining. I had stumbled onto my first taste of human computer interaction and designing interfaces. During a bi weekly critique in my senior project sculpture class here at LSU, I had a eureka moment connecting software and art. Time out, real quick, hang on. When I say art, I do not mean a piece of art. To me, art is a verb. It is the act of creating. The thing that you see in a gallery or a museum, that's not art. That is a piece of art or a work of art. OK, side note noted, time in. I was so excited by my profound, at least to me, revelation connecting software and art, I had to share it with everyone in my class right then. So I explained to everyone that both software and art work best on two-week cycles. In the software world, this is known as agile development. You set a list of, goal, set a list of goals for the next two weeks. This list of goals is called a burn-down chart. You then put your head down and go to work, crossing things off your chart as you go. At the end of the two weeks, you stop and analyze how successful you were at completing those goals. You then set new goals based upon this knowledge. You just keep repeating this until you're done, or more likely, your company runs out of money. <laughs> so everyone just stared at me with this thoroughly unimpressed look. My sculpture professor responds, of course, Cole, that's why we have by with critiques. I know! But this thing that we do as artists has been validated by a completely different group of people that actually have metrics for success. <laughs> no one seemed to care very much, so eventually I gave up and we all got back to talking art. All of you should care a lot. Humor me, at least for the next five minutes, since that's what I'm here to talk about today. The connections between art and software. So the piece I was working on during Senior Project was called Riverless Walk. It's the largest and most involved installation I've made to date. The concept of Riverless Walk was to allow people to explore the beautiful architecture of the Chicago River Walk through three different mediums, namely an interactive installation that allowed you to explore a real place that was supported by traditional media. The space the installation was going in had a long walkway followed by an entrance foyer that led into the actual room itself. This physical transitional space provided me a beautiful vehicle for the transitions taking place in the media of the piece. Also, thanks to the confidence provided to me by the unique technology aspect, I was able to show a media that I don't traditionally work in, black and white photography. By starting with black and white photography, the viewer is able to understand immediately the subject matter of the installation. Now they're primed and ready to make more abstract connections. Moving from photography to small-scale sculpture, we move both further away from traditional art forms and direct representation. These small-scale sculptures are a semi-traditional media in that small-scale sculpture has been around for thousands of years. But these have a uniqueness to them in that they were created via a 3D printer, not a block of marble and a chisel. This is also where the technology starts. The way that I made these sculptures was by feeding the photographs into a depth extruder algorithm that extruded the photographs into 3D space based on pixel brightness. This algorithm borrows from the tradition of landscape painting. Landscape painters paint objects in the foreground brighter and with more color, and the closer you get to the horizon, the darker or grayer they become. The evolution of two-point perspective came about in the Renaissance, thanks to artists who also studied mathematics, namely geometry. They observed principles in one subject, 
and applied them in another. The most advanced technology of their day was mathematics. The most advanced technology of my day was the computer. So, after feeding my images into this depth extruder algorithm, I got out these 3D contour lines. I was then able to stitch these lines together to make solid printable sculptures. I then also reused this same algorithm in the interactive portion of the installation to make up the blocks that make up the buildings. So now the viewer has a point of departure from the physical world to the virtual world. Having moved from traditional to semi-traditional, we're now ready for the part where art really meets tech. Walking into the active installation space, you enter a three-quarter circular room. There's a large white concrete pole right in the middle. There's a radius of about 20 feet. I mounted directly in front of this white concrete pole a laptop, projector, and Microsoft Connect, all on this custom design platform. Hung around you is an 80-foot long canvas in a half circle. And as you walk around, the projector rotates to follow you. By moving through a physical space, you're navigating a virtual space that is an abstract representation of a physical space. Do you now see why I felt the need for transitional media? This whole piece dealt with transitions in space and imagery. Walking down the Chicago Riverwalk, some of these buildings are over a quarter mile apart. I needed a way to express these transitions to the viewer. In the interactive portion of the installation, every physical action maps to a virtual interaction. So, as you can see, walk right, the buildings go right. Get further away, the buildings get further away. Come back around, they come back around. And then if you move around really quickly, everything kind of bursts apart. This was my favorite part. I noticed whenever I was developing the installation, this analog artifact from the way the proje moving projector across the canvas made the whole thing kind of shimmer. Think lens flare here. So rather than try and deny this digital to analog artifact, I embraced it and made it part of the piece. So now, the quicker you move around, the more the sides of the blocks that make up the building come apart from one another. I wanted people to spend time with this piece, to form a relationship. And when they understand how their physical presence is affecting it, then they can focus on the content and the interactions taking place. My goal with the interactive portion was that they would move past the instant gratification of, oh, I do this, it does that, to I am doing this, so I can examine that. My previous interactive piece to Riverless Walk, Building Bridges Out of Buildings, led to my first software job, designing and developing natural user interfaces. Natural user interface is a term that relates to designing interfaces that are intuitive and natural, rather than predefined or metaphorical. The mouse and touchscreen, those are examples of a graphical user interface that have a predefined way of interacting with them that the user must learn. So thanks to countless hours of coding, 100 plus on this one piece, and experience with designing natural user interfaces, I got contacted by a startup out of New Orleans that needed not just any developer, but someone that could write code for the Microsoft Connect. And apparently, I was the only person in South Louisiana doing this at the time. <laughs> Artist, right? So since I wasn't concerned with getting my system admin chops up to snuff or reviewing best practices for back-end application development, I landed an awesome job writing really interesting code. So, while we're talking tech, let's take a closer look at this. The company I started working for was called Kenobi. We were developing a web app that allowed you to get real-time feedback for learning any kind of kinesthetic activity. Think yoga, golf, dance, whatever. Use your body. We got it covered. Our app put your video beside the instructor's video. But then, furthermore, it overlaid the instructor's skeletal data on top of your own skeletal data so that you could see how off you were relative to the instructor. This is huge. 
Because if you're trying to teach yourself something like yoga, if you're practicing the pose wrong, that can be worse than not practicing at all. It creates bad muscle memory, which is nearly impossible to overcome. So if you're observing this carefully, you've noticed I've used the past tense throughout here. Well, yes, Kenobi went the way of many startups and stopped. Although it stopped, it got me to New Orleans, which has served as a wonderful test kitchen for evolving both my art and software together and separately. And thanks to art feeding tech and tech feeding art, I've been approached by people starting software companies that need not just any developer, but someone who's familiar with cutting edge and often buggy tech. New Orleans has always been known for food, music, and art. And there's currently a large group of us that are working on adding technology to that mixture. And I couldn't be happier to be contributing my own special blend to the pot. But I would like to finish my talk with a request to y'all. Find a way to connect the seemingly unrelated aspects of your life. You will be amazed at the results. Maybe you're a chef by day and a gearhead by night. I bet there's something to be learned by taking your skillet into the garage one night. I don't know what you'll learn. To be fair, I don't know if you'll learn anything at all. Maybe some things connect better than others, and I just got really lucky with software and art. But I would be willing to wager it's not a totally unique situation. Look for the little things at first, like the two-week cycles I notice connecting art and software. Once you can find one really solid branch, everything else will start connecting. Thanks. <laughs>